believe we're looking at take three here, people. <clears throat> I'm told that uh, they couldn't hear me before. Actually, that was just me uh, doing my mute impression. So, <clears throat> uh, if we're finally on track here, let me uh, let me go over what happened yesterday here on Saturday Free Comic Book Day. Uh, <clears throat> it was our intention to do something that uh, the stores and the shops uh, weren't able to do yesterday because of this, this virus calamity here. And uh, <clears throat> one, of the way, one of the ways we tried to uh, uh, make up for that was to have our own free comic book day in the Steve Rude studio. I'm Steve Rude, this is my studio. And <clears throat> by uh, the way we did that was to uh, give away the, the kind of things that free comic book day was all about, which is giving away free comics, uh, <clears throat> some posters, some postcards, and uh, books, things like that. So I, that went very successfully yesterday. We had a lot of people writing in. Uh, as I mentioned before, I've got uh, stellar fans. The people that follow uh, the work that I've done and the work that I've done throughout the comic book field, <clears throat> and in particular Nexus, are a rare, rare breed of human being. <clears throat> I know that from all the feedback I get uh, from you guys after these broadcasts, and the letters that I've gotten over the years and decades. It's been very flattering. Uh, anyway, to show you how successful this has been, uh, these are the amount of <clears throat> uh, requests I've got for <clears throat> sketches <clears throat> and the Nexus Chronicle book. So, <clears throat> what you're going to get, all you guys that <laughs> ordered all these things, is something like that. <clears throat> Those are the kind of drawings I do within the book. And the book itself is something like this. I keep hoping to the wrong page here. What this is is basically a pencils versus inks book right here, with a lot of stuff in the um, in the background here. Things like this. <clears throat> so it's a very informative book. I never wanted this to do book, art books where it's just pictures. Uh, people want to know what's behind the scenes in an artist's life. And uh, <clears throat> so these lucky guys right here are going to be putting me to work for a while here. Uh, <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> Also, we got <clears throat> we got some five these these cards that I'm essentially going to do are going to go to five essential workers. One of which, <clears throat> you know, we've been getting a lot, a lot of mentions from um, some of the people out there that have been doing this. <clears throat> something that I didn't wasn't really aware of, and that's these people are called essential workers. People that have to be out there regardless of this uh, virus in here. <clears throat> and uh, uh, wouldn't you know it? We get a lot of people that drive beer trucks. Now, I don't know what's up with that, but <clears throat> that is, I would definitely consider people that drive beer trucks essential workers. So we've got five of these guys right here that, that we're going to be doing little drawings for on here, which I'll be signing. Uh, <clears throat> I like to start off the show with um, some of the art that people rarely ever see from me. And I think today's, today's offering is going to be something I did in uh, life, life painting class. It's a life drawing class, but I chose to paint. So we had this girl posing as a mermaid. Uh, <clears throat> I made up, as you can see, I make, make up a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of the things in the composition here. <clears throat> she wasn't really in front of an ocean, she was in a studio. And this is the kind of things that I produce when I'm at Life Painting Clash. So a delightful model <clears throat> and a delightful chance to exert my imagination right here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I like I like also I think due to the fact that I get these kind of requests for uh, requests for these things and that is give art lessons uh, on things that people either write in about or things that I think are important that other people don't cover and one of the things I see on YouTube a lot is are people talking about likenesses how to get likenesses and one of the ways uh, that uh, that I think that people need to know about as far as likenesses goes is something I can demonstrate through this. This is from an old ad in one of my uh, women's magazines from the War Years. And you can see the photograph of the girl here and the line drawing up here. Now, if you can break things down to line, then you can turn it into a tonal mass, which is how you, how make, how you make things look real. <clears throat> but the linear part uh, is, uh, is a way that a lot of people start their drawings to nail down the proportions because uh, nailing down proportions, facial proportions uh, are 
are essential to getting a likeness. If you put the eye up too high or space the eyes too wide, <clears throat> it's not going to look like that person. And believe me, <clears throat> that is something that all of us uh, work on for the duration of our lives, of our career. So, uh, in hopes of passing on some of the things and once again putting me on the spot, Steve Rue, the humble dude, <clears throat> we're going to go over to my drawing board here. And as you can see, <clears throat> I've got somebody that uh, we all know is Captain Kirk here that I'm going to be doing a likeness demo of. And I'm picking Captain Kirk because I'm told that he is uh, <clears throat> one of the hardest people to nail down as far as his portraiture goes. So not being one uh, for uh, shy retreat, <clears throat> we're going to try to get uh, a really good likeness of Captain Kirk here. This will probably take me about 10 minutes. Well, one of the ways a lot of people start off in, uh, <clears throat> as illustrators is they do an underdrawing in blue pencil. Now this is not going to show up very well, but you can see I'm trying to block in <clears throat> the proportions of Captain Kirk's face right here. You can see it on the paper. Okay, good. So I, I start with that. This is how I always start. And <clears throat> I know his eyes are in the middle because everyone's eyes are, unless you're, you work at the circus. And <clears throat> we're going to map out the proportions of Kirk's face just as we, as you saw in the, the thing I provided with earlier <clears throat> of the uh, photo from the women's magazine. So I'm, I'm going to keep things simple. I'm not going to get into a lot of ins and outs. That's going to take place when I <clears throat> when I go in with a darker pencil right here. But I've got to look at this and then remember what I've seen literally half a second earlier and <clears throat> transfer it to paper. I've got to get all the angles just right here. Otherwise, it's going to look like uh, like Mr. Spock and not Captain Kirk here. Someone said, James Burke said, Man, my kid and I were just talking about your Shatner <clears throat> yesterday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's nice to hear. And then so, Diana, Diana yeah. said, Yay, Kirk. It seems we have a lot of Kirk fans uh, sounding off here, which is, which is always a good thing. Um, Kirk, as you know, is... <clears throat> is uh, somebody who I've based uh, Nexus on over the years. Just because, you know, I was one of the original Star Trek fans here. Anyway, so that's that's my <clears throat> that's my bl uh, initial blocking right here of, of Kirk's face. So now from here, we're going to go in and kind of uh, decide which lines go where, okay? <clears throat> in a permanent kind of a way. So with this dark pencil right here and... Uh, in my ability to make no mistakes ever, we're going to go in here and hopefully <clears throat> get a likeness of Captain Kirk. Now, one of the w one of the ways I have an advantage here is uh, there are some ca some dark cast shadows on his face. I'm going to block those in in a linear kind of a way, okay? And <clears throat> again, this is something that I'm I'm having to do careful observation under. I don't want to make anything too dark <clears throat> or too light. I want to make something <clears throat> that shows you that uh, uh, with a lot of training your eye, you'll be able to uh, do this kind of thing on your own. And <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, like I mentioned, this is a, this is a lifetime of study right here. It, it doesn't end. There's, there's no termination of uh, suddenly you, you suddenly have it down. I've, I've had things come and go in the in the weirdest of ways um, <clears throat> someday it's it works uh, and you have it together and other days uh, you're a hopeless mess this is a mental game here uh, painting and drawing is a mental game so <clears throat> knowing that and knowing that it depends on how much rest you got or or uh, how you're feeling that day uh, <clears throat> that has that can have a lot to do with things sometimes. Uh, I'm like when I'm looking for the neckline, I'm measuring in from the chin, so that's literally like right there, and I measure down from the chin, <clears throat> and I I uh, just by doing that, I have I have a pretty good idea of where I'm going with these things right here. Now these are the famous Kirk uh, <clears throat> sideburns that we all know about. 
but you've got to pay attention all the time. You've got to be alert to every little thing that's going on here. And those, those who aren't, <clears throat> woe to you. Carlin Stewart said, Hey Steve, been years <clears throat> since we have seen each other in Memphis. Love, love, loving the live Facebook broadcast. Good to see and hear you. Well, thank you. That's good to hear. We, we're always getting, you know, our, our share of uh, remarkable uh, and astute uh, intellectuals uh, calling or writing in after these broadcasts here, which is which is highly appreciated. So, <clears throat> on behalf of uh, what we're trying to do for people that uh, don't have a comic book shop to go to and, and uh, get their free books, we're trying to make up for a little bit of that. And we also have a surprise visitor coming up in a little bit here that I know you guys are really going to like. She rarely makes a personal appearance, but <clears throat> she's coming direct from the Playboy Mansion to, uh, to give us the, the actual scoop on uh, a lot of things we try to do here. So let's, let's block in uh, Kirk's face tonally here, okay? And now that we've got the linear part done, we can look into uh, adding some shadows uh, to Kirk's face. Someone said his features are very subtle. Maybe, maybe because he's handsome compared to somebody like Spock, who has longer, more pronounced characteristics. <clears throat> um, somebody wrote in and said uh, Kirk is hard to do because, uh, in comparison to someone like Spock, because Spock is ugly and Kirk is handsome, which would all be true. In fact, I think Shatner himself made a comment like that once when they were on one of the sets of the movie. Someone said, it's interesting to see artists who draw Captain Kirk as opposed to William Shatner as Kirk, if that makes sense. You'll want to make the eyes uh, not crossed. <clears throat> so, uh, you very much <laughs> have to be a pay, pay attention to the direction that the eyes are looking here. Um, we have a nice broad uh, cast shadow for the... Uh, for the chin there. This is all based on the lighting that we're looking at here for uh, for Captain Kirk. Someone said, hi Steve, all the way from Malaysia. All the way from Malaysia, yay, let's hear it for Malaysia, that's great. How are things in Malaysia? Tell me how they're going there. He's gonna write in and give us the, the scoop here. <clears throat> you can see uh, how we all, all of us artists use the size of our pencils here to block in things tonally. Kirk is, I've also noticed that Kirk has got a pronounced uh, uh, forehead line there. He's, he's got these lines that come in, kind of come in like that. You know, people are always talking about uh, the fact that Kirk had a hairpiece in Star Trek. <clears throat> uh, to me, uh, he's probably the only one who doesn't look like he's got a hairpiece on. Look at the show carefully and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about here. You see how I'm using the, the side of the pencil here. Someone said, <clears throat> hi Steve, amazing to see you working. Greetings from Italy. Greetings from Italy. This, this is an inter international world these days, people. I remember the last time I was in, I was in Italy. <clears throat> a bunch of these really nice guys. Uh, we had a great time at a comic book shop. This may be one of these guys that are writing in. And <clears throat> these guys surprised me with some kind of Italian wine. Now, the main man here is not exactly a heavy drinker. Uh, but I learned to be when I was in Italy. We got completely hammered, and <laughs> no, we we didn't. I don't I don't want to <clears throat> I don't want to screw up my PR agent by telling them that I am a drinker because I'm just I'm just not. Um, never got into it. Um, in fact, the more the more the crowd would do something, the less the less I would do it. <clears throat> That's just my my personal makeup right here. Anyway, so we're we're trying to do our best with Captain Kirk here, and <clears throat> this is how I go about uh, getting my likenesses. There's a lot of artists that will uh, <clears throat> that will end up, uh, uh, you know, projecting or tracing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of times in our business when we have to uh, we have to resort to being to work smarter and not harder, and <clears throat> this is one of the ways. Uh, we do it uh, that they do it right here is to <clears throat> uh, is to just blow it up and just trace off the main features on something like that. And <clears throat> but in this case we're tr we're uh, we're trying to show the the freehand method here. 
of how we can go about uh, getting this kind of stuff. There, honestly, people, there are many different ways to learn how to, how to uh, <clears throat> capture a likeness, but it's something that every artist has, has to learn how to do for good reason. <clears throat> We're always having to look into this kind of stuff and figure out how to make our jobs easier. Someone said, Steve sketched in Kirk and Spock in the background of some Nexus pages in the past. Anybody get upset by that? Uh, only, only the agents of Nimoy and Shatner. No. <laughs> this, is, this is part of the interesting thing about their business nowadays. Uh, uh, right, and, these, and these times, we've, we've had lawyers uh, step in and, and uh, basically take the fun out of everything. Uh, the way I see it, and any little infraction that involves a copyright is we're called to the mat about, and uh, I personally find that ridiculous uh, <clears throat> and completely unnecessary. In fact, <clears throat> if I threw a bottle of Coke in one of my panels, wouldn't that wouldn't that be something Coke would pay me for instead of getting mad about? Here, this is something we're gonna we're gonna try. We here we're gonna try melding some of this stuff into the background here. Because it is kind of a dark on dark kind of a thing right here. Someone said, "Did you make a point of developing a style, or what comes out? Did you make a point of developing a style, or what comes out? Comes out?" Yeah, I get I get what he's asking completely. Uh, somebody wrote in and asked that I make it a point of developing a style. Well, only only in, in, as far as uh, uh, <clears throat> I had people that I was heavily influenced by. And that I very much wanted to uh, be like. That was Joe Rubenstein. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, Joe should know better. He's a, he's a fantastic artist himself, a longtime uh, comic book artist and illustrator, and uh, someone who's been doing workshops for, for a while here. It's good to hear from Joe. So, <clears throat> here's my version of Captain Kirk right here. Uh, it's uh, <clears throat> being on the spot, it's as good as I can make it at this moment right here. Uh, we don't want to forget that right there. The official Kirk uh, Captain emblem right there. Oh, I got the wrong one here. Never mind. Okay, there you go. Uh, I was about to see an avalanche of mail coming in, and I didn't want that. So <laughs> Anyway, so here's, here's Kirk, uh, the best of my ability here. So <clears throat> this is going to go out to some... some uh, some fan out there that's uh, been in touch with me as, as, as I've done this. We're going to randomly pick uh, where this is going to go to and <clears throat> hopefully it'll be someone who appreciates uh, Star Trek and uh, the things that's brought to a lot of people's lives over the over the years and now decades. Someone said, who do you model your Superman off of? Uh, I, someone just asked, <clears throat> I'm going to repeat the question just in case uh, someone did not really hear uh, the question here from the producer uh, behind the scenes here and that was who do I model my Superman after uh, <clears throat> I think a lot of you have a pretty good idea what the answer to that is if anyone's ever seen uh, something called the original Superman uh, that's kind of where I base everything on that I've done for Superman uh, <clears throat> the <clears throat> the flight the uh, Fleischer brothers when they did their cartoons uh, their theatrical cartoons of Superman, they based it on, of course, on, of course, the original Joe Schuster drawn Superman, and that's that's what I've done. And I remember DC giving me a whole lot of nonsense about <clears throat> using that version in my world's finest books. Uh, I was I was kind of uh, I didn't know how to how to how to make what to make of that, but I was uh, basically assaulted by their editorial team uh, <clears throat> saying that's not Superman, and I thought, well, geez. Crying out loud, if that's not Superman, who is? So there's my version of Captain Kirk. We're going to sign it right here. And again, this is going to go to somebody. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what month it is. It's, it, April is gone. It's, May. It's March, April, May. Okay. May we learn that <clears throat> things are being done in May. So that's my version of Captain Kirk right here. Compare it to uh, <clears throat> the version we just saw. <clears throat> and uh, you can see how accurate I was able to do on my own right here. Uh, 
for people that draw for a living, this is this is something that is is uh, uh, this is a daily occurrence right here. Uh, <clears throat> this is why I practice so hard because I want I want uh, <clears throat> I want to be able to when somebody calls upon me to do something, I don't want to be someone who hems and haws and hesitates and has to think about it and gets nervous. I want to be so, someone who who has worked so hard at his discipline of drawing and draftsmanship and everything that goes under the sun when you're an artist, but I can literally just snap into place, go to work, turn out something good <clears throat> that pleases first myself and then hopefully uh, pleases somebody else. So <clears throat> that's the lesson for today. As far as uh, uh, the lessons we're doing here. Um, so we're going to set Kirk aside here for a second. And uh, uh, I think now we're going to um, announce that special guest who has been waiting uh, patiently in, in Studio B to kind of kind of come back, come from behind the curtain and talk about the things that I'm incapable of talking about since, since I'm just an artist. So let's turn it over to my better half, Princess Gino Ginelli. Because <laughs> <clears throat> he knows I need being on camera. <laughs> what did you want me to talk about? <laughs> Seriously. Um, uh, No, I hate being on camera. <laughs> My mind is totally blank. So, <clears throat> let's let's help people remind Gino Janelli here uh, what she's supposed to be talking about. <clears throat> when I was on yesterday, I was talking about uh, financial things that went on in, in during Free Comic Book Day, and you were here to remind me that it had nothing to do with that. It had to do with placing the fans and giving them something that they weren't able to get uh, normally from. <clears throat> Uh, things that would normally be open, and that is uh, the shops and the conventions. Now all that stuff has is, is been abolished because of this virus right here. So <clears throat> I think Princess here is, once you've collected yourself, you're going to be able to tell everyone, a girl this pretty is shy in front of the camera. I'm the one who should be shy in front of the camera. So just take it from there, Princess. No, we had um, a, a great virtual turnout yesterday. We had 105 orders, which is fantastic. So we're going to be sending out a lot of free books to a lot of people. Um, I'm having my ship helper, my mom, come over and help us get those out the door. If you ask for it to be signed, they will be signed. And um, we got lots of Nexus Chronicle sketches for Steve to do. Um, a couple commissions, and I'll be emailing you if you didn't do a request for your commission. Then either please send it in or I'll be um, after you to get that. But yeah, if you have questions, send them over. We had a great time. Um, I did two basic all nighters trying to get the Kickstarter ready. It's ready, Kickstarter approved it, so it's going to launch today, Sunday. It'll launch on Friday. So if you're one, one of the uh, people to get in over the first weekend, then you can get the Kickstarter at cost because we're trying to keep it down. It's going to be a big, big book because it's five years. So in order to keep the cost down, um, we're starting it at cost at what last year's page count was. And then um, our stretch goals are adding pages to it. So you guys get to decide how book, how big the book is going to be. So I'm going to turn this back over to Steve. I said my share unless someone has questions. So we are back to the dude. You finally met Princess Gino in front of the camera. It's going to be a, it's going to be a rare moment that probably won't be repeated in the next millennium. Here. <laughs> so I think it's time to uh, to take our drawing here and do a drawing. And as as is our practice, our common practice, we're going to let um, the uh, family pet do the uh, the choice here. Chloe, can you come over here? It's, it's Chloe. It's time. Okay, you can't be a hound dog anymore and lie around. Come over here, Chloe. Come. Okay, she's awake now. Chloe, now come over here so everyone can see you yeah, and the TV audience. Now, if you reach in here, there are a bunch of new names we added to this bucket list right here. Okay, you know what a bucket list is, right? So I want you to reach in there 
<clears throat> like you do with your paw. Put her there, partner. Chloe. <laughs> <clears throat> Reach in there and grab <clears throat> somebody's name, okay? First, we're going to shuffle all the names around. <clears throat> and we're going to pick one here. Chloe. <clears throat> wanted a reward, right? <laughs> Didn't she want to be bribed for this? Okay, apparently she did. So, <clears throat> the one flow heart picked today, uh, the lucky winner of the Captain Kirk sketch, is one Robert Roy. So let's hear for Robert in, uh, in audience land right here. Uh, Robert, you're going to be receiving this Captain Kirk sketch you saw, you saw me do uh, live in front of everyone's face, and hopefully did a good job at it. So, <clears throat> we have your address, we know where you live. And this is going to come your way. Finally, we're going to sign off by saying uh, we all know that uh, these are unusual times right now in people's lives and, and actually globally, which is something unique in my lifetime and yours, I'm sure. But to spare not, because we're always ready with uh, free giveaways, uh, not just comics, not just posters, not just uh, postcards, but this is going to, going to be shipped along with every order that you make here, uh, so everyone is prepared. And don't forget, we've got the best corona killer in the world that I'm holding in my hand. So don't despair. Good times are, are, are going to return soon, and you guys take care. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> douse myself with something that guarantees that I will not be sick myself. I'll continue drawing. I'll continue looking for your letters and comments. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Right, Floey? <laughs>